You kidding? No. Nope. Back to this. We're back. Shit, man. That's right. I didn't ask for this. I'm not getting paid for this shit. What was the last one we did? God damn! It's, um, <laughs> it's, not, it's not that one. We gotta go to the... The, uh... Grand Bricks. Customized. Oh, okay. Then we gotta go to the shop. Do you have any... Custom points? Item points? We gotta buy the next thing. Oh, no. Yes. We gotta get 15 tickets. Just beat one more Grand Bricks, and, uh... That should be enough. Standard. Ooh. We're getting edgy here. Yeah. Let's do it. Why are you playing? I'm the I'm the F Zero guy. <laughs> I'm the F Zero pro. I yeah. wanna try. I can okay, do it. You can do it. I'm man too. Ha. Huh. That's all I'll say. Ha. Huh. <laughs> Here's Big Blue. Drift Highway. You know, no one let's play his racing games. Well, with good reason. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really stupid and really, really repetitive. Yeah. It's, makes sense. <laughs> now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. mm, but not us. <laughs> this is the only place you can find a let's play with a uh, Little attention as to what will be good or bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about animation. Uh, what's your opinion on uh, fluidity over uh, detail. detail? Yes. Huh. Well, I was just thinking about this last night. <laughs> well, my say on the matter is that wherefore thou hast too many betwixt the aforementioned statement. And mm, furthermore, fight. I find your notions quite compelling. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> That's what I think. If the uh, if the defendant should contribute a rebuttal, mm. I should uh, query that uh, the statement that a your your statements are both facetious and exploitative and uh... To my person. To, to the people of the pygmy um, uh, heritage and your notions contribute to the recession of society as a whole. Well, holy shit. <laughs> I think that's a lot. Kinda harsh, yeah. Jesus. Easy now. <laughs> well, I'm a frank person. Well, let's be frank for a minute. Frankly, I find that statement to be fake and gay. <laughs> shit. Who's with me? Everybody well, who's with me. in my ass. Everybody who's with me say I. Nay. <gasps> what? Who wants to get up here and beat this man with the stick? <laughs> Look at this thing, you just go straight up. Yeah. What is this? Whoa. Remember Road Rash? Yeah. Yeah, you should, uh, should be able to use weapons. Yeah, you should, uh... You know, you should really be able to use weapons, because that spinning thing is completely useless to anyone who isn't a pro. I know, like, I mean... Everything's useless to anyone who isn't a pro. This whole game is designed you, around, uh... You gotta master it before you even start. I know. Retarded. <laughs> it's already assuming you're perfect before you... Before they... Like, before the word go. <laughs> yeah. Like, you must be perfect. It's crazy. Like, uh... Uh-huh. Like, I couldn't... I was reading the manual, and I was like, uh... Okay, so if I kill another racer, I'll get a man back? <laughs> that's what it said, and it was like, uh -huh. try to kill other racers to get men back to finish the stage. Yeah. And I was like, that's completely, that statement is completely inoperable to anyone who wasn't a 100% pro. Yeah. Like, who can do that? Who can attack single load of car and attack it enough to kill it? Like, oh. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to survive here. 
I can't even focus on anything else. <laughs> yeah, but, like, if you're good enough to actually kill someone, uh, voluntarily, then <laughs> you, you don't need lives. I know. If you lose a life, then it's not good enough for you, because you're a pro, and you're probably trying to speedrun it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, uh, I I liked uh, Road Rash because when you crash, you can uh, you can just walk around. Yeah, like I, you can I go, just you I can... just walk into the horizon forever. <laughs> yeah, you can go off the track. It's cool. Uh -huh. I remember uh, going with like a bike or whatever, and going right up along the side of this turn thing. Yeah. Right up on this mountain face thing. Just drive right up on it and just <laughs> and then just. <laughs> completely go off the race. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's great. And like, I, I I wanted nothing more than a racing game where you could just walk out and uh, do your thing, maybe shoot some people. <laughs> then I discovered Grand Theft Auto and uh, my mind was blown. Because yeah. until then, like, I'd only been playing Driver. Yeah. So that was the freest driving game I, I owned at the time. I thought there was nothing better. Because yeah. I, I heard, like, Driver 3... Had uh, gave you the ability to jump out and, uh, and beat people up and stuff. And turns out that was just GTA ripoff. Yeah, like uh, GTA Three when that came out, that must have been pretty shocking. <laughs> yeah. Like I was still playing the first Grand Theft Auto at the time and having fun with that. Uh huh. I never really played Three. Until, like, the first uh, open world 3D GTA I played with Vice City. Mm hmm. And I love that. Like, I, I must have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours on that. Mm hmm. Just because it was, uh, you know, just really quaint to be playing a 3D open world game. Yeah. Ugh. And of course, you can, like, have sex with your hookers and then beat them up for their money. Yeah. That's what everyone was saying. Everyone still says it. I know. Because games are bad. Things are and bad. And they're the devil. Mm. And if you want to go to heaven when you die, you better not go play no devil games. You hear? <laughs> like, um, you know, actually, I was, uh, I was on a certain image board a while ago and, uh, hmm. I, Yes, I was on there, and, uh, I, uh, somebody was talking about how, like, um, some people on Facebook flipped out, uh, uh about, like, a, some kind of serial killing, um, being connected to, uh, Mass Effect, Mass Effect 3. What? And I was like, like, it's just like, um, I, I think it was kindergartners who got killed. What? And where, where do you see that connection? I don't know. If you've even like, if you've even touched anything before, where do you see that connection? I don't know. I, I, uh, like, I looked at that and I couldn't help but think like, uh, children died here, and I think you should be taking it a little more seriously than trying to uh, judge video games because I think that's ridiculous. And like, uh, it, it, I find it, I found it a little insulting. See, I'm, I'm colorblind. So I never bothered playing Mass Effect 3 because all the endings would be the same to me. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't same know. Here. <laughs> That's why I never played it. I guess, allegedly, if you put uh, every uh, ending beside each other and watch them at once, it's just a, a color swap. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's like... I never touched uh, Mass Effect 3 because the... Uh, the people on the internet told me it was bad. Yeah, and I trust them. And I want to be pro like them. So. Yeah. We're pro here at Ginger Twitch. We only play things everybody else hates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by that I mean things that don't sell ever. Mm hmm. Because that's the like only. The King's Bounty. Yeah, the King's Bounty. And King's Field. That, that long term uh, let's play we did. Long ass. Time. I can't believe, even believe we. Uh, I remember that we did that. This has been shit's been going on for a year now. I know. What the hell? Over a year. Like why? It's too much freaking entertainment for one society. I think. <laughs> for one civilization. I don't know. Yeah.
crank out 200 videos in 365 days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're all like half an hour long. <laughs> There's an, uh, none of that pansy 10 minute shit. Yeah. You gotta be ready when you turn this shit on. <laughs> In fact, uh, I've been contemplating the idea, like, uh, taking the whole concept of this channel, flipping it on its head, and doing videos as short as possible. <laughs> like, I had a... I had an idea. Yeah, it, it's gonna it take a script like, though. Like uh -huh. I've been working up a script for the last little bit for a review of Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. For a review of Skyrim that's over in five seconds. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Trying to wow. say as much as I can in five seconds with visual aid, like uh -huh. for images. So to get the it across. Like I've noticed that if you wanna make a video go by fast, if you say what you're saying on the screen in text, people it will sink in better. Like, it'll be easier to remember. Yeah. So I was thinking if we had a five-second review, it opened with an explosion that lasted for, like, a quarter of a second, and then you blast out everything you want to say. Yeah. And make sure that the video is black, but with white text zooming by, and then end the video off with, like, another explosion, with, and then behind the explosion, uh, a review score gradually comes into opacity, and this all <laughs> takes place in five seconds. Uh-huh. <laughs> Whoa. Because <laughs> I was for, thinking... <laughs> for the new generation... <laughs> for you freaking kids out there who can't stand to watch a video past a minute. Uh-huh. It's so, time where reviews have to be entertaining for some reason. <laughs> I mean, that, that wasn't... That wasn't a thing back then. Really? Like... It, reviews aren't really reviews anymore, actually. Like, uh... Ever since, uh... AVGN... Um... People like, uh, the Nostalgia Critic and, like, uh, the Cinema Snob and, and all those people and that guy with the glasses, uh, Ooh. every single person from there, like, they act out a character. I know. And I think sometimes their opinions, uh, are the opinions of the character. I know. Well, the, like, why am I watching this review if it's not a real opinion? I'm so glad, uh, Spoony left that guy with the glasses. <laughs> That was going nowhere fast. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. It's too good for them. Well, They're small brains. Like the the that guy with the glasses was like nostalgia critic, which oh. was the best. And uh, then like some some obscure people with who were okay, but nobody watched them. And uh, like and that's it. So once. The nostalgia critic got bad. Not to mention everyone like, else got worse. Really, and, really terrible pandering and oh, hor yeah. horrendous skits that. Oh yeah. Just, oh, just that like, that stuff that like. <laughs> um, you whoever started that, I, I'm not even sure. I, I think AVGN started that, but anyway, uh, AVGN they left a is scar. a skit. What? AVGN is a skit. Well, yeah, he, he's a character too. Yeah. Um. See, his, his opinions were honest, though. Like, 100%. He was talking through the uh, the angry nerd that he uh, decided to be, but really, was, there were his opinions. <laughs> yeah. He was channeling the, a space being <laughs> from another world mm -hmm. coming into my body. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, my ship is dead. Oh, your ship is dead. The ship was dead. <laughs> retired. Yeah. And he died. He retired from life. Let's retry her. Um, yes. but, uh, some people on that, on that guy with the glasses, though, it's like, I'm amazed they, they even have, like, they, they have the motivation to keep going. I know, I don't know. <laughs> like, even at, looking at Gender Switch, with its, uh, uh, like, I think it's up to 50 views average or something now. But Yeah, it's up. Um, it's going up slowly. Yeah. Slowly. It's like, like you can get like 30 to 40 views in, in the first night and then drop off for like a month. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason certain videos just go <laughs> thousand views. Yeah. I don't know why. Can somebody explain to me why that deer hunt video has like 1500 views. Yeah, yeah. And, and rising. Explain what in the comments, uh, like and subscribe. Comment, <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyone who's watching this, go watch the deer hunt video, and for God's sake, tell Explain me. Explain yourself. Tell me what was good about it so yes. I can do it more. Because <laughs> it's, it's the most popular video on the channel, I have no idea why. It's uh -huh. some stupid PS2 game that no one likes. Like, maybe it's because no one played it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, like, uh, all the hyper mega meta turbo, like, ridiculous eldritch abomination let's plays, uh, are of, like, uh, first person games where you don't do anything. Uh, like, Slender and, and, uh, Minecraft. Amnesia. Minecraft, yes, definitely. So, uh, like, Deer Hunter's sort of like that. Um,. It's just a game where you, like, you have a world where you can make funny things happen if you're a funny person. <laughs> um, so, well, yeah. I wouldn't want to do, like, uh, wouldn't want to do Slender. I haven't even played Slender yet. I played, like... I don't know, like, I would've. I played, if it was, uh... If it wasn't, like, a, an internet sensation or whatever but I played like the first like I played like 10 minutes of it mm -hmm. and I was like okay I get it well that's well that's the experience and I just like, never played it again I don't know well you, you experienced the game you shouldn't uh, feel bad about that I know you might you might as well beat it beating it you might as well be considered 100% yeah. like this F-Zero playthrough uh -huh. did I mention we're gonna do this 100% the more you know. No. Oh. It's only going to take 600 episodes. Yeah. 40 minutes each. <laughs> it's okay because it's Ginger Switch, uh, like, it's Ginger Switch Gaming Podcast plus video. <laughs> <laughs> this is all the tips and tricks, news <laughs> and reviews yeah. and previews. For all the games that, yeah, that three or four people care about. <laughs> uh huh. Mute City. I'm on the road. Hey to guys. I'm the greatest master. What? Something, something. Mute City. Yep. While you're uh, liking and subscribing to this channel, mm -hmm. um, and liking us on Facebook, and uh, posting about us on Reddit. Um, be sure to check out the latest, uh, uh, indie sensation from, uh, like, <laughs> uh... See, that's why you usually... I was going to make a joke about, uh, Andy Warhol, but I couldn't think of his jo name. <laughs> uh, the, yeah. So okay. that's, that's like... Most, see, most of the time... That's my intention here. With, uh, with humans, they decide what they're gonna say before they say it. Yeah. Most people. No, I don't know. No, no, no. I I knew what I was going to say. Okay. I, I just like when I start saying something, I'm like I say the first word and I'm like, "All right, I'm going to be able to think of uh, Andy Warhol's name uh, before the end of this sentence for sure cuz he's such a he, he's such a uh, iconic person." And anyway, so then I get to the end of the sentence and I'm like, "Hmm, something White? He has white hair. Why why am I thinking white? Um Warhol, right. Oh. So is there an Andy Warhol game yet? <laughs> there should be. <laughs> is it like yeah, a, that'd be cool. A platforming beat em up on the NES. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he plays Andy Warhol. <laughs> um and you just get to roam around these really bland two tone worlds <laughs> with like a Uh th that like games like that exist. I know. They're just not ma made by him. He teach him how it's done. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was talking uh, a while ago about a movie called uh, Trash Humpers. Check it by, out. By like. That's uh. By some guy. Uh, uh, you uh, you gingerheads out there. Yeah. Uh, who want to have everything uh, ginger switch approved? And want to live like us. Yeah. You can only watch uh, approved Ginger Switch movies, listen to approved Ginger Switch music, and wear approved Ginger Switch urban apparel. Yeah. So anyway, the first officially licensed uh, and uh, approved 
Ginger Switch movie is Trash Humpers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check um, it out. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I was looking at some reviews on the uh, Rotten Tomatoes, and <laughs> the like half of them are positive, <laughs> even though it's like the it's a complete garbage movie. Uh, well, let's just say that it's as bad as possible. Like it, it, it was made to be as bad as possible, and people are saying that it's art because it it challenges uh, what you think you find entertaining. <laughs> so because it because it, it's designed to be. Uh, bad but not funny bad like bad so that you don't want to watch it um because of that it uh it's good hmm like where wh where's the line draw where uh something stops being uh bad and starts being bad good well, I'll tell you one thing, it's something we've been trying to figure out here since this time last April with this channel. <laughs> Where does the line draw between terrible and good? Hmm. It's like that particular uh, writer-director, um, he's famous for making movies that are all, uh, they're all about his intentions. Because they're not good movies, they're they're just, uh, they're his message, and everything else is just secondary. <laughs> so, like, his latest, uh, like, I, I actually, uh, I looked up a lot about this guy, because I was interested in, in him, uh, and what, like, reviewers were saying about him. Usually these people are panned because they're, uh, uh, well, pretentious. This guy, like, this guy just got lucky, I guess. So he's like... It's 50-50, I guess, but his movies are so bad that you wouldn't think uh, that would happen. <laughs> um, anyway, like, uh, the latest one, like, uh, Spring Breakers, mm -hmm. um, that, that's actually pretty, like, recent. Um, and people are saying, like, it's sort of a, a parody inversion or something like that of, uh, a generic, uh, like, do bro, uh, party movies, um, well, like, American Pie and, and, like, uh, well, stuff like that, and, uh, it, it does that by being one, mm. and be, and also being stupid by ending, uh, ending with, like, it's about these girls in bikinis, and they stay in bikinis through the whole movie, even after they, <laughs> even after they become like bodyguards for this drug dealer. <laughs> so they're like, uh, what? at the end they're wearing ski, like pink ski masks, and uh, and uh, like they're killing people and stuff, and they're still in bikinis because it's symbolic, right? <laughs> or something. Wow. I, I guess it it symbolizes the connection between. The spring breaker lifestyle and and uh, and being a like a douchebag. I know what thing. it is doing. It's challenging my perception as to what I find good. <laughs> yeah, that's what. It's a really uh, God. just my view as to what I want to like is a lot more rigid now, thanks to that explanation. Uh huh. Thanks. Definitely. Me too. I think we both grown here as people. Yeah. Let's go watch Wild Zero. <laughs> I don't ever want to go back to this casino place. Stupid dumbass casino stage shit. <laughs> how many times did we should go back and watch all the videos and count how many times we replayed Mission Three? <laughs> and then, the whole let's play, pretty much. <laughs> It took like eight episodes, and then finally it just clicked, and you could somehow do it. Oh, I'm doing yeah. it. What the heck? And it was after like it's... two weeks of not doing it. Uh -huh. so somehow it just stayed in your brain. Yeah. It's happened. high execution, is what it is. It's something yeah. that scrubs like us don't really see. Yeah, until um, you've entered the zone, the clutch yeah, zone. Yeah, the clutch zone. Yeah, that's like, what we should call it. The <laughs> like the amazing shit. Like the. It's like with a game with a skill ceiling that's so amazingly high that uh, 
you can feel when you get into the point where you can do it, and it's like, and it just, it's like, it's so in, entrenched in your muscle memory that you can stop playing for years and then go back into it, and bro, whoa, uh -huh. what happened? Like, it's the zone. <laughs> yeah. It's the clutch zone. Yeah. The, clutch play. It's like, it's like a, uh, the ultimate clutch zone game is like a game where you, uh, you start, and then you're dead because of invisible spikes, uh, s right where you're, s w like, invisible st spikes, uh, right under where you start, um, and the whole level is filled with them. So, like, uh, um, once you get into the clutch zone, you could beat the game by dodging the invisible bullets and, uh, even though you didn't know previously spikes. where they were. Yeah. Whoa. Exactly. Just kind of new. Y you just get the feel. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit like the Matrix. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. I'll have to make a mental note of that. <laughs> kind of reminds me of, uh, Invisible Tetris. <laughs> like, uh, at the end of, uh, that, uh, arcade Tetris game, during the credits, the, uh, uh, the pieces turn invisible. And there's, like, one video of this guy... Um, oh, actually yeah. doing that. I remember that. Like, yeah. uh, the, uh, was he the grand champion at the time or whatever? <laughs> I don't like, know. Like, it was, uh, but the, it, it was the grand the video is of hugely Tetris, famous, it? yeah. It was, a uh, Grandmaster Tetris in Japan, I think, wasn't it? Mm hmm And, uh, yeah, at the credit portion, they go invisible. Yeah. And he's, like, still playing. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, like, he's in the clutch zone. <laughs> he can play invisible Tetris all of a sudden. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a, a certain point zero zero one percent of the human population can go point zero zero one percent above the natural skill ceiling of a game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's not not currently explained by science. <laughs> They've done biopsies on these people's brains, only to discover nothing. Yeah. Nothing was different from that person and another player. <laughs> they just realized that uh, the frequency that the uh, that the CPU of the uh, game is running is the same frequency that the like some portion of their frontal lobe is running. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way you can beat this it friggin' game. It syncs perfectly. These friggin' stupid AI—they're cheating. 